Hey everybody with Bulldog Illustrated, my name is Clay Watkins. I'm Kobe Serena. And we've been able to observe practice for the past couple days and so here are our takeaways. So yesterday Brock Bowers uh, was able to highlight the tight end room. Still looks like one of the best tight ends in the country. Extreme burst coming off the top of his routes. He, he's picking up right where he left off. I mean, nothing much more to be said there. Number one tight end in America, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, uh, Brock Bowers. Yeah, there's uh, a Reed Gilbert also ran some impressive routes during 7-on-7. Seven seven. His size and speed continues to be an absolute matchup problem for defenses. He dropped a an open touchdown that Stetson threw a great pass on on a corner route, but it, it's nothing to worry about because he's certainly, he's certainly a ma matchup nightmare for any DB linebacker safety, you know, all across the country. Yeah, I'd say he's definitely coming into his own. We were able to see yesterday uh, he took he took a ball from Beck, stumbled, but was able to recover, and uh, saw Javon Bullard in open space and was able to get a stiff arm in before getting some more yards. So he looks he looks good. I'm excited for him. Yeah. Uh, first team offensive line uh, consisted of Roger Jones at left tackle, Devin Willock at left guard, Cedric Van Pran back at center, which is expected. You had Tate Ratledge coming back from the injury. Uh, he was starting at right guard, and then Warren McClendon at right tackle. Uh, in terms of offensive line, I really don't get to see that much in practice. I focus on the defense, but I will just say Cedric Van Pran is an amazing, amazing young man. He, he's, he, he stuns me every single time we're able to interview him. Uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. Excited to see him play. The consistency of the receiving core, there's first team receiving core was, was one you could expect with Kyrus Jackson, Ladd McConkey, A.D. Mitchell, and Brock Bowers rounded out that that first group. Darnell Washington also rotated rotated in with some of those tight ends. Uh, with the second group consisting of Jackson Meeks, Dominic Blaylock, Marcus Rosemary, Jack Saint, and uh, and Ari Gilbert, uh, consistent of that second group. Yeah, in terms of like the group receiving drills, it was it was a bit interesting because if you look at the individual tight end drills that they were running, you saw like a, a Brett Seether ahead of uh, Darnell Washington on the explicit line they had, and you saw. Uh, a, a goatee ahead of a, a Reed Gilbert when it came down to the actual receiving drills. I don't really remember seeing them much out there. I don't know if you saw them. No, and you also, we were able to watch through some tight end drills. Oscar Delp made some really impressive catches through some contest, through, through, through some misplaced passes. Uh, it, he's certainly a massive talent that probably will be able to see the field some, but it, it's definitely one of the most loaded tight end rooms that the University of Georgia has ever had. Highlighting that uh, that first team defense when seven on sevens were ran, uh, Chris Smith, Kamari Lassiter, Dan Jackson, Malachi Starks, William Poole, Keely Ringo, and Smile Monin consisted of that first seven on seven group. Uh, Chris Smith it continues to be a vocal leader. He's been able to uh, to call out plays all amongst the defense. Definitely demands that defense with a lot, and uh, and he's been able to make a few a few big plays. He was able to make one in particular on uh, Dominic Blaylock where he. Came about 15 yards across the field, jarred the ball loose right as it uh, right as he caught it and turned. So, Chris Smith's a guy that we're well familiar with from last season, but certainly expect a lot out of him this year. Yeah, so did the coaches. I mean, uh, Muschamp had nothing but great words to say about him in his interview yesterday. I'm um, just excited to see him step up and take a bigger role in this team. And yeah, Chris Smith. Yeah, and I think I think one of the last things to highlight from yesterday in particular is that. Is Aaron Smith's a guy who's, who's struggled through some injuries, but everybody knows how electric he is when he has the football. He ran a deep route and uh, ended up beating Nylon Green on a deep touchdown, and uh, and that's certainly certainly something to look out for. I think utilizing his deep speed, something we're going to try and do, and uh, and always great to see him uh, getting some separation. Yeah, in terms of uh, personal takeaways, I just wanted to emphasize the fact that Adani Mitchell is is the real deal. We saw him yesterday in practice beat uh, Keeley one-on-one -on -one in a go route for an open wide touchdown from Stetson Bennett. Uh, and in terms of uh, who's going to be playing opposite of Keeley, if you watch Gita, you would have thought it was William Poole, but it looks like William Poole is probably going to be playing more star. And the reality is Kamari Lasseter and Nyland Green and some of the freshmen are going to be competing for that outside corner spot. And only time will tell to see who actually is there starting on uh, September 3rd. And through the little we've seen so far, you've definitely been able to tell Kamari Lasser has been able to hold his own at that outside corner spot opposite of Keely Ringo. He's got great size, great intangibles. Going up against AD, he had a few great, great plays yesterday going up against him, locking him down a little bit, uh, you know, friendly competition. But 
But he's definitely holding his own out there. And what Georgia certainly has a loaded corner room. It's a lot of experience with you have some guys like William Poole and Chris Smith, who's been there for a long while. But then you've also got some great young talent with Dalen Everett, Jaheim Singletary. Uh, Kamari Lassiter has been in there a couple years, but, but it's certainly filled with talent.